Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is The Best MEDC, and it's been a while since we did a Q&A video, so I figured it was time. The other day, I asked you guys over on Instagram to ask me some questions that I can answer in a video, and this is that video where I will answer the questions that you asked me over on Instagram. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I tend to like it when you guys ask me questions that aren't all specifically related to EDC. I hope I got to your question. I mean, there were hundreds of questions asked. I can't get to them all, uh, but I picked the ones that I thought were most interesting. If I didn't get to your question, you can try to ask it in the comments down below or in the Discord server. It's a uh, link down below, but also just discord.gg slash EDC. I now have a vanity URL, so you can go there, ask a question in the Discord server. And if I can't get to it specifically, there's a community of people who have a vast, vast, that swath? What is the word you would use for that? Uh, they, a lot of them know stuff I don't know. So you can go into the Discord server and ask them questions as well. But with that said, let's do the damn thing. Oh, and before we get started, because you guys are definitely gonna ask me, the knife in my pocket today is the Shirogorov F95RT. I have it in blue titanium. This is just a sweet, sweet knife with beautiful action. This thing is sweet. And on the wrist, we have the Christopher Ward C65 Trident GMT, which is one of my more recent pickups. I talked about it in my watch collection video. This one gets a ton of wrist time. I just love this watch. And in the glass today is High West American Prairie Bourbon. You can see it over on the barrel back there. Uh, this stuff's good, but it's not my favorite whiskey. I just wanted to switch it up today. We'll get the whiskeys here in a bit. Mm, nothing like drinking whiskey at 2 p.m. on a Tuesday. It's Tuesday. It's not Wednesday or Thursday. It's Tuesday. The first question I'm going to answer because it was asked a million times is what happened to Whiskey Knife Fight? Is it gone? What happened? When's it coming back? Uh, we'll be back tomorrow. It, we had two weeks where we just had some stuff going on. Jeremy had personal stuff and I had a really bad internet problem for a month and I think, I hope it's resolved. If not, we'll still be back tomorrow, but we'll be there on whiskeyknifefight.com, 8 p.m. Eastern time. I hope to see you there. The very first question comes from Zach Wisdom 53 He said, what are some other interests other than EDC that are on your radar at the moment? I've always loved fishing. I've always been really bad at it. And now I can never really find the time to go. So I do really enjoy that. And camping, just being outside, outdoors. I love that. I hate when I sit here at a desk all the time. It just kills me. I love just being outside. So uh, that, just outdoors and fishing. Uh, but something, I, I was watching a video, last, no, 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 I was watching Longmire last night, a TV show. Uh, I was watching that and they were talking about compound bows and stuff. I wouldn't mind buying a compound bow and just getting into archery and just, just having something I can go do and just zone out and, and not think about anything else. But if we're talking about stuff I enjoy and have fun doing that I'm not doing work related stuff on, that would be video games. I play Rocket League almost religiously. I love Rocket League. I've been playing for five years, <laughs> way more time in that game than I care to admit. Uh, and, and other video games. I enjoy playing video games, always have. Next question comes from Yike underscore Mung, Mike Young. Uh, he said, favorite whiskey right now? Great question. In the glass is uh, the High West American Prairie Bourbon. It's good. It's good for the price, but it's not my favorite. My favorite all time whiskey, I think is probably always gonna be Lagavulin 16. I love that whiskey. It's just so good, but I don't drink it a ton because it is kind of expensive, it's about $100 a bottle. So I try not to drink it too much. Uh, my alternative for that is usually Laphroaig or Ardbeg 10. So instead, I'll tell you the three that I'm drinking the most right now. That would be Woodford Reserve Double Oaked, Old Forester 1920, and Ardbeg 10. Those are the ones that I drink the most right now. Next question comes from Kid Ate a Kid. He said, are we going to see more on the AT4? Yeah, yeah, definitely more content on the AT4. Uh, I'm still not sure what I'm doing with both channels. Like part of me just wants to pull everything into this channel and just be done with it and just move forward and not have to manage two channels because what you're gonna see here is that as I spend time making videos on the other channel, I can't do two videos a week on this channel. I can't do three videos a week and the podcast and live stream every so often. Like it, it just doesn't all work out that way. So I'm not gonna get into that. I've been <laughs> debating with myself over that for like a year now. Uh, I'm making some more videos on the other channel. I've went camping with the family, done some stuff over there. I really enjoy what I'm doing with that. And uh, yeah, you're gonna see more AT4 content. I wanna do kind of an updated 
truck EDC at some point right now. Nothing much has changed since I did the first one, uh, but I am gonna do a first aid kit. Like I'm gonna build one that I think is like what you should have in your truck as a first aid kit. And I think that'll exist on this channel. I don't think it'll go on the other. I think it'll happen on this channel. So you'll see more AT4 related content on both channels uh, until I figure out what <laughs> what is going on. I'm, I'm just gonna choose something and move with it uh, and stop thinking about it so much. The Watchful Wrist, how did you manage to make your YouTube full time and what pressure does it bring? So I've answered the first part <laughs> probably a million times now. Basically the way I did it was by knowing how to do it before I started this channel. I, I ran another channel, tried to make that channel work for five or six years and it never did. Uh, but I also at that same time worked on other YouTube channels for other companies the entire time. So seven years of YouTube experience before I actually ended up going out on my own and doing it and, and making it a full-time thing. Uh, so that helped a lot. I knew how to make money off of YouTube meaning not just from ads playing on the videos. Those don't pay that well. If you if you relied solely on YouTube ad revenue, uh, it's very, very difficult unless you're getting millions of views per month, which I'm not even doing now. I think right now I'm getting like 600 to 900,000 views per month. So it's very difficult to live solely on YouTube. You have to really monetize in other ways through Patreon, affiliates, sponsors. You really have to just create a safety net so that when things fluctuate, because everything is always in flux, you, you just have to know how to deal with those fluctuations and try to stabilize it as much as possible. But the second half of this question is what really made me choose this is what pressure does it bring? Uh, immense pressure. One, I have my entire family riding on the success of this channel. So if uh, one month is short, I've got to make that up somehow. But also there's a pressure to constantly be online and accessible and available and in front of people, because if you're not, one, the YouTube algorithm will spit you out and it does not care. Two, people forget very quickly about you if you're not consistent and always in front of their face. So there's that pressure to be always on and always just making something, doing something, and it's exhausting. Creatively, mentally, physically, it's exhausting. And then the other pressure is to always be creative and doing something new and trying to come up with new things and not be the same thing over and over and over and over. I've talked about it recently, how I am sick and tired of making videos at this desk. I am so excited for some of the content I have coming up in the next few months because it's gonna bring me outside of this office and, and into new things. And uh, I can't wait to share that with you guys. But for now, you're gonna see a lot more of this desk and uh, hopefully we will get into the new stuff sooner rather than later. But my guess is that won't be until next year. Little Driver 701 says, who does all of your sharpening? I do. Uh, I've never actually had anybody else sharpen one of my knives. I've always sharpened my own. I didn't really learn how to sharpen until probably earlier this year, late last year. I have a KME sharpener that I bought this week that's on the way, but I also mainly use my, my work sharp. I have two different work sharps that I use, the Ken Onion Angle Set and the Ken Onion Edition uh, Bench Grinder. Next question comes from the Pirate's Cove. When is the best knife under 100 coming? So what he's talking about is, if you missed it in a recent video, I mentioned that I was doing a best knives under $100 and you guys can choose or help choose which knives I include in that video. I'm gonna pick one or two. My buddy Jeremy is picking one. Zach from Blade HQ is picking one and they're trying to surprise me with their picks. So hopefully we all choose different stuff. But you guys, there's a, a link. I'll put it in the description of this video too, but in the other video there's a link to a poll where you can go vote on your best knife or your favorite knife under a hundred dollars and i will pick one two or three from the community and then i'll have my picks zach's picks jeremy's picks and your picks all in one video so think of it more as a communal best knife under a hundred dollar list and i'm just making the video about it so you guys can help choose just hit the link in the description down below and enter your vote for the poll oh to answer the question uh that video is going to happen whenever jeremy and zach get back to me and i get all the knives in my hands and then i will purchase some of the other knives that they didn't send to me and then there will be two videos on the whole process. I'll be unveiling which knives you guys selected, which knife I selected, which knife Zach, and which knife Jeremy selected, and I'll show them all in one video. And then about a month later, after I've had the extensive time to carry all of them and use them and make notes, I will make the final video. Trust Banana says, is your studio set up in your house? One of your videos mentioned how hot it was. This is actually a studio that I rent. I am not at home. It's about three miles from my house, and uh, I really appreciate it being so close, but I also like not having to work from home. I worked from home for 10 years and it got really old. And I got to the point where I couldn't focus on anything and having a child at home made it very difficult. It was just not working out. So I found a very affordable office to rent. And this this is the office. It's a, just a 600 square foot studio. 
spoiler alert, I'm gonna be moving to a new space soon. There may be another question about it. If there is, I'll go into more detail. If not, you'll just have to wait. Next question comes from Jaylang90. He says, what is one thing you carry or have carried that you don't really need? One thing I carry pretty often, I don't have it, it's on my desk because I was fidgeting with it, is a Zippo. I don't really light things often. Sometimes I'll light a candle. Sometimes I've got incense or something. Uh, I don't use that Zippo to light a cigar or anything if I'm smoking one because it's a an, an arc lighter or a plasma lighter and those are not great for cigars. So uh, it's more of like a fidget thing and uh, I don't use it very often. It's just cool to have sometimes. And sometimes I carry coins but not very often, but most things I carry, I've, I've reduced my carry significantly, and most things I do have with me, I use. Stiker2008 says, what do you think about motorcycles? Do you have one? Yes, I still technically have one. I got sort of a street bike as a graduation present from my dad when I graduated high school. He got me, I guess it was a 2007 or 2008 Ninja 250. So very small, very lightweight street bike. And I wrecked it two days later. I flipped it end over end doing 70 miles an hour. And uh, yeah, that was a good wake up call right after I got the motorcycle. We fixed it, it got back out on the road and I had fun with it for a long time. And then when I was living in Pennsylvania, I had to move it and I put it, I was putting it in a two U-Haul and we couldn't push it up the ramp. It was just too steep and too heavy. So I backed up, let it run for a little bit and tried to drive it into the truck, which I've done many, many times, but the ramp on this U-Haul was, was very long and steep and the engine cut when I got one wheel inside, reached up, grabbed a handle to try to keep the bike from falling off the top of the ramp. And I ended up uh, tearing my AC joint. And that was when I hung it up. I decided <laughs> I've been hurt too many times on this thing. And now that I've got a family, I couldn't imagine riding one. I just, I, I don't know. I, I enjoyed it. I love it. I miss it. But yeah, it's not something I'm ever going to ride again. I don't think I don't, have, I don't even have my motorcycle license. I never got, I just had a permit for <laughs> three years. The world was going to shit and your apocalypse gear bag was full. What knife are you taking? Pretty sure if I had one knife to take with me for the apocalypse, it would be the BMKT Father Hunter. That knife is a, an absolute tank. It is the knife that Brendan from BMKT made for me. Especially, I'm gonna do a video on it pretty soon, uh, but it's just a camp knife that he made me and it is badass, it's big, it is just a brute of a knife. And I can't wait to show you guys more about BMKT. But yeah, that's the knife I would probably grab. Uh, similar question, one girl, two pockets. <laughs> that's so funny. Uh, okay, she said, what's the one knife that started it for you? The first knife I ever got was actually a, a Barlow brand slip joint that my dad let me choose. I was like six years old. And I always had a knife in my pocket, always. But the one knife that really did it for me that, that I think really sparked the interest in everyday carry for me, talked about it before, and I think I answered that question incorrectly before. I mentioned the Gerber 06 Fast, which is the assisted version of the 06 Auto, a little more budget friendly, like $50, but I don't think that's accurate. I think it's actually a Kershaw knife. I have it, hold on. I think this is called the Kershaw Select Fire Multi-Tool. I, I think that's the name of it. Anyway, uh, pretty standard little cheap tactical looking knife, but, you also have a bit holder in the handle along with bit storage on either side. You have two Phillips and two flathead on the sides. Uh, this is not a knife I would use or carry now, but it was one that just piqued my interest for me early on. And uh, I ended up buying pretty much every guy I know one of these for Christmas when I found this knife. I mean, I bought this knife for myself. I liked it so much. I bought one for everybody. And uh, at the time, everybody thought it was cool. I did too, but now it's just not one that, uh, that I would carry or use, but still it's a little special to me because it was probably the knife that set it all off. Nick of Hobart said, review your very first EDC products compared to your most recent purchase. Um, this is an idea I've been kicking around for a while. So recently, well, not really recently, a few months ago, I did a video reacting to my very first EDC video. Did that video and it got me thinking about this, which what I would probably do is compare what I'm carrying now to what I was carrying when I started the channel, the very first EDC video I uploaded when I started this channel, which that video was actually uploaded to the other channel and is private now. So. You guys can't see that. So I think it would be something that would be fun to react to or compare the two. Call me Mr. Marcus says best knife skill materials and why. Micarta, patina. 
That's all you need to know. A man and iPhone said, as a young father, what's something you would recommend all new fathers consider EDCing? A handkerchief. I wouldn't necessarily recommend the one I carry, which is a Mighty Hanks. I actually have these coming out soon. What I have in my pocket is a Topo Mighty Hank, which was a collaboration between myself and Mighty Hanks with Carry Commission. Uh, so we did a little run of these. These are great. I love these. I've always got one of these in my pocket because it's microfiber on one side and there's just cotton on the other. Uh, I wouldn't necessarily recommend one of these as a new father. What I carried for the longest time when Eleanor was born was, it's called a North by North, but it was Merino wool. And I used it to wipe up spit up. I used it to wipe her face. I used it as a blanket for her one time because it was so big of a handkerchief that she could actually use it as a blanket. Hang on, I'll show you. I believe this is a two foot by two foot handkerchief. It may be 18 by 18, but I think it's 24 by 24. This is a very large handkerchief, but it packs away fairly small. It's kind of big in the pocket. It's more of like a winter carry for me, throw it in a coat pocket. Uh, but this thing is great. It's warm. You can use it around your neck. And I used this as a blanket for Eleanor when she was a baby several times because it was big enough to use as a blanket for her. And it's warm. It keeps you warm. It's merino wool. So it's like a neck buff, but you can do more with it. Uh, so I would recommend something like this. Maybe not this one exactly, whatever you can find, but a handkerchief that can double as maybe a blanket or something for wiping is great. Probably the best thing to add to your carry as a dad. Another question regarding fatherhood, as happy as can be said, how much more prepared do you feel for your second child compared to your first? I don't feel nearly as nervous. The last time I was really nervous heading up to delivery and all of that, I was very nervous. I was a bundle of nerves. This time, the biggest thing I'm nervous about is taking like two or three weeks off like I did last time. Last time it didn't really affect us too much. I had a big surge in views the day Eleanor was born, actually. I remember sitting in the hospital. I was talking to Alex. I'm like, I don't know what we're going to do about me taking two weeks off. And as I said that, I pulled up my phone. I checked the stats and a video that I uploaded just absolutely blew up. And I was like, oh. I think we're going to be okay. It was just a feeling of like total relaxation then because Eleanor was born. Everything was just like, oh, I can breathe. This time, I don't, I don't know. Uh, stepping away for two weeks is going to be very, very tough. Uh, as far as fatherhood and, and having a second child, I'm not that nervous this time. Like I know what to expect. I know that there are things that can throw us off, uh, things that we don't expect that could happen. But um, if everything goes smoothly, we've done it once. It was fairly easy other than you know a lack of sleep but we made it we did it Eleanor's doing all right she's actually doing great so I'm not too nervous this time around famous last words right <laughs> Matthew 336 says what made you start a channel the biggest thing I think that contributed to me starting a channel years ago was I had an idea that I thought would be great on the channel that I worked for I worked at pocket now and I had an idea of installing a tablet into a car instead of a head unit just doing a tablet swap they were like i don't know that's probably not great for our audience they probably won't enjoy that and i was like well i'm gonna do it anyway so i started a channel i made that video and it did really well surprisingly and then i was like hey this i should probably just keep doing this just making things and doing stuff and i did and over the course of four or five years it gained 70 80 000 subscribers and Eventually I had to walk away. That's where this channel started. So if you're asking why I started this channel, um, the other one failed. <laughs> uh, Alex gave me an ultimatum, really. And that sounds like a bad thing, but it was really what I needed. Uh, I'd been working on it for so long and she said, I never see you, it's not working. You're killing yourself over this. Like really, you gotta, you gotta choose. Like, do you wanna have a life or do you wanna work on this channel and never go anywhere? And I begged her for one month and started this channel from scratch and it worked. I mean, it just, it clicked right off the bat. So yeah, that one was more out of necessity. The other one was just out of chance. Like I did something that I thought was cool. Other people thought it was cool and then it just snowballed. But yeah, uh, that's the short version of it. Hayden Stapleton says the AT4 is my dream truck. How do you like it after a few months of ownership? I'm gonna be completely honest. I love the truck. I, I absolutely love it to death. I thought that I would miss my Tacoma because it was a straight drive. Uh, I don't really miss the Tacoma. After having more power, more torque, more space, more of everything, I don't miss the Tacoma. The only thing I really miss about the Tacoma is that really what I wanted was like an overland rig. I bought the one freaking truck on the, on the market that is like the worst case scenario for building an overland rig. And I got rid of what was probably the best 
truck on the market for an overland rig. So now I'm kind of stuck. Can't really do many mods to the truck because there's not much to do with it. I made a bad decision as far as which version of that truck I should have gotten. I should not have gotten the Carbon Pro Edition. And here I am. So yeah, it doesn't make me like the truck less at all. I just kicking myself for getting the wrong version of the truck because if I had gotten the right one with the right bed, I would have a bed rack on it and a tent and I would be doing more content on it. But right now my hands are tied because can't really do anything. And I've talked to a bunch of manufacturers and they're like, we can't really do anything either because it's a structural problem. So there is hope. There's one company that said, we think we can do it. Uh, problem is their solution is like seven to $8,000 and has a two year wait time. So there's that. <laughs> as sharp as I can see says, what's your favorite YouTuber to watch? Uh, right now, I have to say Whistlin' Diesel. I recently found him through Demolition Ranch. He did a video with Matt on Off The Ranch, technically. And uh, I, I don't know, it's it's kind of like a train wreck. You can't look away and you're just like, how is he buying a $100,000 truck and just destroying it on purpose? Um, I, I don't know, I enjoy it. I've been just eating it up lately. And yeah, I kind of respect his his approach, which is making fun of people who are like, what's up guys? Like he always makes fun of that and telling people to subscribe and all of that. Uh, I don't know. I think there's stuff to be learned from, I think his name is Cody. There's stuff to be learned from that guy, but also, I mean, he's just kind of having fun. And granted, I think there's only so much of that I could watch of, of just beautiful things being destroyed. But at the same time, I mean, there's entertainment value there and I'm, I'm enjoying it for now. Given PNW or given Pacific Northwest says, how has COVID affected your work? Uh, greatly. So I had plans to travel this year. Lots and lots of plans to travel. Uh, I was supposed to go to Toronto and do a video with Peter. I was supposed to go to Utah, do a video with Blade HQ, Florida, do a video with uh, Jeremy, Baltimore, do a video with Hitch and Timber. I was supposed to do a lot of traveling this year and none of that happened. It sucks. I mean, I was so excited for all the travel and, and all the fun stuff I was going to do. And I have basically sat at this desk and made videos all year. So it's taken some of the fun out of what I had planned. Um, I've dealt with it. It's not affected anything financially too much. Views actually went up for a while because everybody's at home. Everybody was off work and at home and consuming more. And now that people have gone to school, things have started to taper a little bit. So it, it's, I, I've been able to see like the trends with what people are doing and how it's affected the channel, which is really cool. But at the same time, uh, it's a little terrifying at times just to see how much uh, this has affected what I do. Uh, but I mean, I've still had fun. Everything is going smoothly. I'm, there's no cause for concern yet. So there's not been a really big change in the channel itself, but it did completely destroy all the plans that I made for this year. A ton. Okay, thank you guys for being awesome. Uh, we'll do another one of these eventually, a couple of months from now, but uh, ask questions down below. Join the Discord if you wanna ask there. Um, great community there. Lots and lots of people who can answer questions. If I'm not there, I'm usually there. I'm usually in the Discord server every day uh, and, I can't ask, uh, and I can't answer questions there as well. But thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you guys in the next one.